CBSD with you, tutorials on gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, carrying on from the last video when I actually installed FreeBSD with the ZFS file system, um, I'm SSHing into the box itself from my main machine. And I'm following uh, various sources of information that I can read online and try to learn as I go along. Uh, the primary one is the FreeBSD handbook, which has a, a great ZFS section. And a few others which I, I can't source at the moment because I wrote them down and uh, didn't put the addresses. But it's from um, various different places and from people far more in tune with ZFS than I am. But as I'm learning, as I go along, and I'm going to try a few cool commands to see what we can do. The first command uh, is to, instead of putting DF to get a, a look at the structure of the file system as I did in the last video, I've read that you use ZFS list, which is uh, far more accurate and gives more information. So ZFS list brings down the uh, file system tree and it tells you how much is used, how much is available and so it gives you a whole host of information. So ZFS list is something which I'll have to bear in mind when I want to list them. And according to the instructions the in the handbook that space in ZFS is not pre-allocated and that you can create and destroy space as needed. Uh, each data set has properties including features like compression, deduplication, caching, and quarters, okay. As well as other useful properties such as read-only, case sensitivity, network sharing, and amount point. Data sets can be nested inside each other, and child data sets will inherit properties from their parents. So, okay. So, I think what we'll do first is, is that I'll create a data set. So, according to the instructions, is ZFS, create, and then switch O, uh, we're going to turn on compression. We're going to use LZ4. Uh, ZRoot is the pool name. Forward slash user. And then I think we need to do forward slash again. And we're just going to call it, oh, I don't know, test data set. Very original. Right, and uh, just to see if it's worked, which it should have done, we didn't get no error. Uh, ZFS list. And, yep, there it is, look. Test data set. Oh, very cool. Liking this. And obviously you, you store any data that you want in that data set. Now that we've created a data set, the most obvious thing to do is to destroy it. So ZFS destroy. I like the fact they got create and destroy. Oh, uh, no, I have to put... Uh, I remember in the syntax of this is uh, the hardest part for me. Uh, ZRoot, the pool name, forward slash, user, test data set. And hopefully that would destroy it. And yes, it's gone. It should be between them two. Uh, then three. Yeah, it's gone, definitely. So that's pretty cool. That's very good. Create and destroy, I like that. Seems fairly simple enough. So what we're going to do, I'm going to recreate the uh, the destroyed test data set. So to cycle through the commands I did before. And there it is again, Look, back again. Uh, 
But now we're going to do is going to rename it. We're going to call it something else. So, um, egotistically, I'm going to call it. Hmm. You'll find out. So we put the name of the test data set. And then just put the director again where it's going to be. It's all straightforward so far. I'm quite liking this. We're going to call it RoboNuggy. Because there's nothing else I could call it really, is there? So ZFS list. And yeah. So the test data set has now been renamed as RoboNuggy, which is pretty cool. And considering I've got an ever-expanding ego, uh, we have to set limits. And I think you can put quarters on the uh, data set. So I'm going to put ZFS set quarter. Now equals, um, ooh, we'll, give it a, we'll give it a gigabyte. So it's one G, no, 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 not one GB. I suppose you could put GB, but one G for a gigabyte. Probably won't work, but we'll try one G. Uh, forward slash user, Robin Nuggy. Ah, uh, you see, I keep forgetting. It's the syntax. So it always has to be the pool name first. So Z root, or whatever you've called it. So ZFS, we'll try that again. ZFS set quarter equals 1G. Uh, Z root this time. Forward slash user RoboNuggy. And ZFS, uh, oh, no. I realized after I typed it. ZFS list. And yes, it says look, available is one gigabyte. So that means I can, that will never ever get bigger than one gigabyte in storage capacity. So if you had lots of data sets with uh, perhaps used by different people and you wanted to limit them, you could stop them from filling up your machine by setting quarters on them, which, yeah, I, you know, this, that's pretty cool. And I would imagine that's dynamic too. So maybe you could change the quarters uh, given different circumstances. Right, what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try making a clone of the data set. So apparently what I have to do is um, make a snapshot, which I'll be covering in the next video. Snap, all right, okay, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, ZFS list. Hyphen, if I can type right, hyphen T, okay. Tells you that there's um, and it tells you that the snapshot I created uh, is there. Oh, so if I put ZFS clone and tell it the name of the snapshot, and then tell it. where I want it to be put and um, what it's called in this game clone robo if I ZFS list it should oh there it is look interestingly it didn't it, in, it didn't inherit the one gigabyte rule set but instead it inherited the the parent one of the main Z root thing, which is 68.2 gigabytes. Hmm. I mean, if it was a clone, I would have thought it would have uh, inherited the actual original one that you copied from. But you know, the, the, that's that's the rules of ZFS. It's not mine to question why. So very good. So we created, destroyed, renamed, and cloned. Very good. And this is only scratching the surface of what um, the data sets will probably do. Like I say, this is a journey of me trying to investigate. Uh, like I say, this is a journey of me learning about ZFS.
you probably those who are more experienced are probably rolling their eyes at me right now, thinking, "Oh, you know, this is completely simple. You should be onto um, all sorts of uh, more advanced shenanigans." But you know, we all start from somewhere. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, um, pretty knowledgeable with most uh, aspects of FreeBSD, but ZFS is something which I, I've never really uh, done because I tend to use UFS on my desktops, which I'm a great believer in in doing and uh, ZFS on the server, but I don't do any of this. I should, I should, I should make snapshots. I should, uh, you know, it's all been set up and I did it ages back and I've left it running and it runs perfectly. So I'd, I've never, never tried. I've never tried sort of like um, sharing over NFS and, and all them other lovely, wonderful things that you can do with um, snapshots, etc., which we'll be looking at later, I think. Anyway, I want to say thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.